Hi everyone, I'm Dom Griffin, I'm a film critic, and you're watching the Armchair Auteur. This is an ongoing video series I do where I talk about old movies, new movies, screenplay analysis, that sort of thing. So if you're the kind of person who likes film culture, likes to see people pick movies apart, please consider subscribing. Today, we're going to be talking about Goosebumps. Here it is, folks. This is the last of our horror-themed Spooky Month videos here on the channel. I've nearly crushed my entire giant Hooptober list. I have six left? Seven? Seven. I have seven left. I have seven left to watch before the end of Halloween, but I think I'm gonna hit it. If you haven't seen the updated list, it's uh, in the description below. And as much fun as it has been all month to watch like a bunch of diverse, different types of horror movies, things I've seen before, things I've never seen, things I've wanted to see, things people recommended to me, I've gotten really nostalgic for how I used to spend Halloween when I was not in my 30s. Like, I still love Halloween, but as an adult with no kids, there's no trick-or-treating for me. I don't think I've dressed up for Halloween in like eight years, and when I did, it was at a house party where I was dressed up as MF Doom. Beef rap, commit to getting teeth capped. I don't drink anymore, so those parties are kind of in general not really my thing anymore. And you know, because of COVID, no one is doing any of that stuff anyway, or at least they shouldn't be. And on top of that, I've recently drastically changed my diet, so even my usual binging on candy and marathoning movies isn't hitting quite the same. But when I was a kid, my mom would make these little holiday special mixtapes for me. Like, for Christmas, I had a VHS with all my favorite Christmas specials, movies, etc. And we did the same for Halloween. There's been some hubbub around It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown moving to Apple TV Plus and how it breaks tradition with it normally airing on television. But as much as I love it as a kid, I was way more into goofier shit like Garfield's Halloween Adventure. And when I got a little bit older, I was very enamored with something like Mad Monster Party, the Halloween equivalent of those old Rankin-Bass Christmas stop-motion animation dealies. I was perusing through things from my childhood to revisit and stumbled upon the OG pilot for the Goosebumps TV series, based on the popular book series by R.L. Stein. I haven't seen any of the other newer Goosebumps movies with Jack Black, but back in the day, back in the Scholastic Book Fair days, I was an absolute fiend for these books. I don't remember the books themselves being particularly scary, but I do remember my school librarian hating that I read them and not something more well-written, but this is the same woman who confiscated and trashed an issue of Wizard Magazine I brought to school because of how implausibly large the breasts Joe Matarera drew in the comic Battle Chasers were, so... yeah. But I do distinctly remember the TV show started to air in late 95 because I was like 9 and the first episode was based on one of the first books I got in the series, The Haunted Mask. It was particularly dear to me because of how brilliantly it captured a trick-or-treating night I spent where I wore one of those atrocious, ugly, overstuffed, overdone, oversculpted Halloween masks where like you're walking around thinking you're going to suffocate trying to get free candy. This was not the same plot, but it made me feel like that night. It was a... It was a horrific night in my life. Now, revisiting it and putting on the original TV pilot episode of the series reminded me that yes, it was kind of cheesy, and yes, it did look really low budget, and yes, it did feel distinctly, severely Canadian. I'm sorry they scared you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mom. But I was very pleasantly surprised by how fun it was to watch. If you're not familiar with The Haunted Mask, the book, or the TV adaptation, it's about a young girl named Carly Beth who is constantly picked on by a pair of douchebag boys because of how easily she scares. Carly Beth is just a very fearful and anxious girl, and looking back, the story suggests a deeper pathology off screen that... Okay, okay, I'm, I'm not going to try to overly analyze this kid's show. I anyway, this girl is a grade A scaredy cat. <laughs> So when her mother makes her this goofy duck costume for Halloween, she snaps, tears it to shreds, and funnels all of her allowance money into buying a truly gross and scary mask from one of these spooky stock horror character shop owners you always see. The mask gives her the confidence and wherewithal to scare her tormentors, but in donning it, Carly Beth becomes the monster she is pretending to be, with the mask fusing to her flesh, and the only thing capable of separating her from this living monster that wants to take over her body is a symbol of love. In this case, the plaster mold of her head her mother made her that she has, for some reason, been carrying around on a stick as part of her costume. It's a touching little fable about fear, identity, and self-confidence, and it's genuinely pretty well made. It's got strong pacing, some solid camera work, and a few very memorable moments, like Carly Beth being tricked into eating real worms because I guess the little actress playing her was just that method. Now, in addition to being directed by veteran TV helmer Timothy Bond, it was written by Jose Rivera, who you may remember also wrote the fucking Motorcycle Diaries with Gael Garcia Bernal. And by written by, of course, I mean adapted by. The actual original author, Arl Stein, shows up here in these sort of really weird, cheesy intro bits that they did in all the episodes of the show. Kind of a la Todd McFarlane and HBO Spawn. Are you sure you know the difference between good and evil? As you race around trying to put food on the table or pass your exams or... Make love. And the thing is, Goosebumps as a TV show is not as genuinely good and scary as Nickelodeon's Are You Afraid of the Dark was in its heyday, nor is it as well written and inventive as the PBS series Ghost Rider. But watching this again was actually a weirdly fun little venture that I did. I mean, like, I've revisited so many different movies and watched so many new horror movies in this past month, like, I'm, like, 58 or something, 59. And while I loved many of them and hated some of them, like, I kind of forgot about that really raw, nostalgic feel you get from when you're a kid and you're watching something that's kind of scary, at least for children anyway, and it's kind of engaging, and it seems to mirror some of the things you were going through as a kid. And I just, 
I just liked it. I don't know. Like, it wasn't amazing. It wasn't mind-blowing. But I liked it so much more than I expected to. And I feel like it holds up a lot better than it has any right to. And I'm sort of a little bit more ready to acknowledge that I'm now too old for all of those things. And that at the moment, my version of Halloween is going to be watching these movies while not shoveling my face with Reese's products. And that's, like, okay. Like, it's cool. Like, life changes. Things move on. You know? And, and that's that's healthy. Goosebumps is currently streaming on Netflix for, like, whatever reason, the entire series. I don't remember that many of the other episodes being very good or at least as good as The Haunted Mask, but there's a couple that I remember being, like, decent, so feel free to spool through. Honestly, I'm pretty glad I decided to end my Halloween month with this. Well, this and the other six movies I still have to watch. Seven? Seven. That's me on Goosebumps. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you think I actually should watch the two movies with Jack Black, because, like, I like Goosebumps. I like Jack Black. I don't know if the movies were any good or not. Let me know. Tell me what's up. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. If you have subscribed, please hit the little bell icon to get notifications when I put out new videos. We'll be back with non-spooky content next week, getting into November, checking out some different things, seeing what movies are coming up, that sort of stuff. If there's anything coming up that you like, want me to review specifically, let me know in the comments. But uh, I hope you guys are having a good Halloween. Stay safe. Uh, do whatever the inside of the house version of trick-or-treating is. Be good to each other and all that. Bye.